this video we're going to be looking at the states of matter. So that is uh, solids, liquids, and gases. We'll also be investigating uh, how those particular states uh, change uh, between one form and another, and investigating the differences between physical changes and chemical changes. So let's look at some activities and demonstrations hosting some of these ideas. One of the items you're likely to examine first within this unit are the properties of matter. So that's how solids are very much different than liquids and different than gases. So I'm speaking about how molecules are compressed quite tightly in solids and that lends to characteristics that are different to liquids where molecules are further apart and then much further apart in gases. Molecules within solids are very tightly compressed together. And this gives them the characteristic of not being fluid, which means they don't take the shape of their surrounding environment. They also can't easily be compressed further down than the size that they already are. However, uh, as we can tell by my artistically sculpted giraffe here, he can move his neck back and forth and they can change shape. When I let go, that giraffe will stay in that shape. Many of the solids around us have that characteristic as well. We can move them around, but they stay in that position until changed. Molecules are further apart from one another in liquids than they are in solids. As a result of this, liquids are considered a fluid, which means they take the shape of their container. These three containers we have in front of us of various sizes demonstrate this fluidity uh, quite well. You can ask your students which container uh, has the most water or liquid in it, and it would be curious to see what they say. In fact, you would know that they all contain the same amount, and you could show that to them by pouring them into uh, two same, similar sized glasses here. Another thing to note is that, much like solids, uh, liquids are not compressible. It means that they, they still take the same amount of space when compressed. In gases, molecules are even further apart. Similar to liquids, they do take the shape of whatever container they're in, but unique to gases is they are compressible. So similar to when you're pumping up your tires, you can compress gases together as a result of the distance of the molecules within that state. You could use these activities in different student centers around your classroom when introducing properties and states of matter. Uh, your students could identify on a table which of these items are fluid and compressible, uh, maybe other characteristics as well as they go from center to center. A key concept within this unit is changes of state in matter. And luckily we have a substance that surrounds us in our everyday that we can view in all three states and that is uh, water. Uh, you can use that as a demonstration within your class. You want to look at uh, how water changes between different states and observe some of the smaller things that take place uh, and we can infer uh, the science behind that change. So we've got a hot plate, an aluminum pan, and a block of ice here. Also, I should say that we also have some safety glasses whenever we're dealing with a hot plate and things that can spatter. Very highly fashionable, as you can well tell. Um, you want to ask your students, what happens to the ice when you heat up the hot plate, when you turn it on? Uh, you can also ask them, what does uh, the ice need to turn from a solid state to a liquid state? This is a good way to introduce uh, heat absorption. Once the solid ice is melted into liquid water, it won't be long before you can see some bubbles at the bottom of your pan forming. So ask your students what they think those are, and then you can also ask them what they think this vapor is that's coming off the surface of the, uh, of the water. As your students are going to be able to observe, it's going to take a long time for all that water to evaporate. What does this tell them? How much heat is needed to evaporate all that water? And how is that compared to the amount of heat needed to melt, for instance, uh, a block of ice? Once your water is boiling and is producing a lot of steam, get a spoon or a glass that's filled with a little bit of cold water Hold it on top of the steam and have your students observe what's forming underneath. Ask them what that is and what change of state is occurring. This is a good example of condensation. Another experiment you can use in your class to show your students how water changes from solid to liquid to gas 
uses a microwave, some ice cubes, and a Ziploc bag, maybe one that you would put in the freezer with a solid seal to it. The neat thing with using a microwave is that it shows those transitions, those changes in state uh, in a short period of time. The only tricky part is getting your hands on a microwave. If you don't have one in your classroom, you may have to borrow one from the staff lounge, much like I have, unbeknownst to the rest of the staff here. Once you're ready to get started, take about three or four ice cubes and slide it into your Ziploc bag. Make sure there's very little air in it by folding it a few times and then seal it off. Set your Ziploc bag in the microwave and set the timer for about a minute and 20 seconds. Now you're going to want to take a look at what's happening at about 20 second intervals. So once you get started and you see some action, you want to ask your students uh, how much time do they think is needed to melt the ice? And then you can observe what happens. How much time passes before the water begins to boil? Usually it's pretty quick. And what happens to the volume as the water boils? That's pretty interesting to observe. And how can they tell this? One of the main ideas that we want students to grasp from this demonstration and the previous one is that heat plays a very important role in the changes of state in matter. So heat is absorbed when moving from a solid to a liquid to a gas and then is lost when moving back from a gas to a solid again. Now another neat thing that we noticed is that it certainly takes some heat to melt an ice cube into liquid, that is to fuse. Uh, however, it, it also takes a lot more heat to evaporate from liquid to gas. In fact, five and a half times more heat. One of my favorite activities that demonstrates changes in state is making ice cream. We're going to take a solution of ingredients, we're going to put it in a Ziploc bag, and in a larger Ziploc bag we're going to put some ice cubes and a little bit of salt, we're going to shake the business out of it here, and that's going to create a tasty batch of ice cream that's changed from a liquid to a solid. Now what we're going to need are some Ziploc bags, a larger variety, a freezer type bag, and also a smaller one that's going to go inside of it. We're going to need some measuring tools, a measuring cup, uh, one tablespoon and a makeshift teaspoon here. We're going to need some vanilla extract, some milk or cream, is usually works a little bit better, some sugar, I'm going to use sugar packets because we're making do with what we've got, that's the type of demonstrations we're doing here, and a bowl in order to enjoy our creation. We're going to start off with our small Ziploc bag and we're going to put about a half uh, cup of milk right within it. And this is about the, the portion that you'd like to have maybe for one person. If you want some more, then you can double the quantities and that'll, that'll make a, a good set as well. So we're going to take the milk and put it in our Ziploc bag. We're going to take about a, a half teaspoon of vanilla extract here in our makeshift teaspoon. We're going to set that in there. There we go. And we're also going to take um, I don't know, about a half a tablespoon of sugar. We're going to set that in there as well. So that equates to about three packets here from what I'm observing. This is all give or take. You know, nothing wrong with having a little sweeter. That's my, uh, my take on it. So put that in there. Give a little bit of a, a toss. We're going to seal this up here. I want to take some of the air out of it here. I see we're catching on some air, so we're going to just seal that off. In the larger container, what we're going to do is we're going to put our ice in it. Now, a tray of ice usually is good enough, so I just insert the tray in the Ziploc bag like so, and then just break them all out. Might be missing a few, but that's all right. And then we're going to take some salt Maybe the equivalent of a couple tablespoons of salt, really. Just sprinkle it right in there for good measure. You see, I'm being very precise here. We're taking our small bag, we're putting it in our larger bag, but I want to make sure it's sort of surrounded by the ice once we get going. And leave a little bit of air in there, seal that off, and we're ready to shake this bag up. Maybe get a little bit of music, do some dancing, 10 minutes of solid shaking with your students, and that should make some pretty good ice cream.
So we've reached the end and here's the true test to whether this would work. We're going to open up the big bag and take our little bag out. Now we've almost only got water at the bottom now. The ice has almost all melted. I just see a few remaining cubes left here. We're going to open this bag here. It seems to be a little bit more solid than it was when it went in. The way this works and the reason why it solidifies this way is that when we put the ice cubes in the larger bag and sprinkle the salt on top of it, it lowers the melting freezing point considerably. And when that happens, it creates a colder environment for these liquids, ingredients, to solidify. And that's how we create some of this neat ice cream.